of your sacrifice and all that you did to help keep this the greatest country on the face of the earth. So um, thank you. And today is all about you. So thanks for joining us. So um, if you don't mind, go ahead and check in now. We've got Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. So pull out your cell phones. And um, I screw this up every time. I really need to practice before I get through with my phone. <laughs> Go to Facebook and you do something there. I think check you in. check in. Check in. Yes. So, and I think it's like you're doing a new post and then you check in. And I'm doing it too. There we go. It got my contractors association. All right. And to say you're attending, how do you attend? And what else do you do? Okay. Anyway, hopefully you figure it out better than I can. <laughs> Oh, okay, there we go. I have this here posted. Okay, so check in. Got it. And location. Okay, yes. So, and then post it. And we do um, a little prize. So, the person that has the most likes or shares or whatever at the end of today is going to get a GTA t shirt. So, um, let us know. At the end, we will tally up your likes and fans and, you know, all that stuff. I really need to get that social, sorry. <laughs> Again, like I said, we are here celebrating Veterans Day. It was actually yesterday, but so glad to have this program right behind it. And we want to honor you and um, take a moment of silence for all those veterans who served our country and are no longer with us today. So we can just pause and have a moment of silence for a brief second just to, to honor those who are no longer here. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, GCA, a little bit about us. We are a national trade organization, and our mission is to educate, facilitate, and advocate. We were founded in 2010 by Mr. Abraham Zion. Um, Y'all may have saw him, met him. Uh, many of you were at the mastermind session right before this, so you uh, saw him there. And he created this organization because what he saw was a disparity in the marketplace. He saw that. Um, Small businesses weren't getting their fair share of contracts. Women-owned businesses weren't getting their share. Minority-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, just not getting their fair share in the marketplace. So instead of saying someone should do something about that, he decided he'd be the one to do that, he stepped up and formed the organization. Um, our vision is to create access, and that's access to you, the small business, veteran-owned, woman-owned, minority-owned community, to contracts in the government space, and access for contracting officers, like our, our uh, keynote speaker, to qualified, certified small businesses that are um, ready and willing to do business with their agencies. So we do that with, bless you, bless you. Thanks, bless you. with training, with events, with um, um, meetings with government agencies. <laughs> Just on the front row, act it up, Bridget. <laughs> 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 Here. I apologize. I forgot we got guests that have never been here before. <laughs> I don't treat everyone that way. I'm sorry, just family. <laughs> um, and then we have a plethora of tools and resources, and then this kind, these kinds of events for networking, where you can meet fellow business owners, other veteran-owned businesses, minority women-owned businesses with whom you can partner, and hopefully expand your network and do other business. Um, government contracting training, we've got a plethora of that going on. We've got our next uh, How to Win Government Contracts. That's coming up on November 20th. That's just a very good introductory session for those of you that are just curious about what this whole government contracting space is. So feel free to join us for that. We call it a Gov 101, if you will, just to get your feet wet and introduce you to the whole concept. We've got our deep dive training that happens every Wednesday at 10 o'clock, and that goes from 10 10 or 10 30? 10 30. Okay, 10 30 to 12. 12. But you know, come at 10, 10 o'clock and then you can network. Right. And then membership yeah. orientation is going to be that same Wednesday, uh, November 20th. And that's really, really early in the morning. But you can do it virtually if you don't want to get in traffic that early in the morning um, from 8 30 to 10 o'clock. And that's very important if you're a new member or if you're an existing member and haven't been to orientation to come and learn about all your benefits and how you can take advantage of everything that we have to offer. So definitely you want to make, make time to do that. 
Um, an annual holiday mixer. This is always so much fun, and I hate it. Last year, I, was it last year? That I yes, it? it was last yes. year. Yes, I was sick. I came back from Korea with like the bird flu or something. <laughs> <laughs> And they had like a, a variety show and all this yes. other stuff. And yeah, so we had a famous scene. Definitely, we gotta y'all need to come, make it just as good as last year, so I can you know be there for the things that I miss. But all of you are welcome. We've had contracting officers, all the people that we've invited to the different events throughout the year. We invite them back, and then they come and cut up, and you get to see them act like real people, and it's really really cool. I mean, not that they aren't real people. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. here. So um, bring your favorite dish. We bring the big stuff, like the turkey and the ham. And so bring your side dishes, the ones that you know people brag about, not the ones that people get to the point. <laughs> so bring your favorite dish. And um, Tuesday, December 10th, is going to be at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a really good time. So hopefully you join us. And new business members. We've got a ton of new business members. And I see a few are in the audience. So I'm excited to talk about them so they can stand up and be recognized. Miss Bossy Books, LLC. Arnisha. Say no more, Arnisha. I thought I saw Deborah. I guess not. Great Career Services, Deborah Clark. No, I did not see her. Uh, Pacific Railway Enterprises, Charlene Hernandez. No? Okay, multi Multicultural Educational Programs, Miss Wendy Love. And Safe Ride Solutions, I talked to Paris Monk earlier She's today. Here. Huh? She's, She's still in the last month? Okay. And then uh, Discover Destinations, Ms. Shintal Shaw. And Marvet Consulting, Mark and Rebecca Smoot. Oh, and they actually they were here. Too. So, alrighty. Well, let's give all of our new members a round of applause. <laughs> and the winner's circle. We've got a, one of our uh, new members, well not new members, they've been a member for a couple of years now, since our old building. So what, three years? Mm -hmm. Two, three years? Mm -hmm. So they won a $500,000 janitorial contract with General Services Administration. They are not here, but we want to give them a round of applause and recognize them for their um, recent win. So it's using the techniques and information that we teach here at GCA. Now, we're going to get started with the program. We've got a lot to cover today, but I'm so um, just honored to introduce to you Ms. TV, uh, Ms. Uh, Bridget Forsyth of TV Forsyth LLC, and Camille Bradshaw with We Build. If y'all can come on up to the front, we're going to give them the microphone, let them share a little bit about what their business is and mission. I know we've got a tight program, but I want to say it. We've known Bridget for well over a year since she was coming as a member, and since we've known her, she talked about this vision she had to build um, better communities, and it's, we're so honored to be a part of the beginning part of that vision coming to fruition tonight, so you can take it from there. Good evening, good evening. Again, my name is Bridget Forsyth, um, a member here at GCA, and uh, co-owner co of We Build Development, which is a very diverse uh, woman-owned minority um, development company. And our goal is to bridge the gap on women in construction with a focus on sustainability um, for generations to come. Um, we partner with corporations, organizations, and initiatives with a shared vision, uh, one being those ceiling girls, again, which brings women into construction. And it teaches girls the foundations of the construction business, and we know that construction business is a male-dominated business. And we're trying to bridge the gap uh, with between that. Um, tonight, we have the honor of um, starting our first project. Um, this is something that's been a vision of mine again for about 12 years now. And I was fortunate enough to meet Ms. Camille Bradshaw, my partner here, um, our other partners in the audience, uh, Mr. Warren Hawley. Um, with the impact of uh, Panama City, Florida, which is my hometown, it was impacted greatly by Hurricane Michael. And as um, a construction company, we went in to our hometown and volunteered our labor to try to you know, get the debris out. Well, we have the honor tonight, we have veterans from my hometown, and we have a signing of a piece of land, and I will turn it over to Ms. Camille. Is, um, it's aimed 
homes, veterans, and with the intention long term view of building a better community. Sustainability means different things to different people. In our organization, sustainability means not only building with those burning material, but being able to sustain the family with the neighbors and family. In saying that, what we try to do is once we identify family and we identify the property and build that property, we're going to keep the family to fend for itself in that we don't have to go out there like most people donate homes to people and they actually will keep mistakes to get homes and then they lose their homes because um, can't pay um, taxes, can't pay the mortgage, uh, mortgages, and they can um, upkeep the home. So we don't want to get into that those position with the homes that we build in. So our idea is to sustain the family in that once we identify the family, we ensure that at least two members of this household, whether they want to be um, entrepreneurs, we help them to develop that business, or we find a placement job for this family. We actually work along with the family to make and show that um, the generations that come into the family, whether it is the kids or grandkids, they're actually sustained also. So we try to identify areas in which they can actually grow. In the case, we see what they want to, um, the career path they want to take, and we go, um, whether they want to go to school, um, college, or they want to get into entrepreneurship, we actually help them to get on that, those, uh, in those directions. So that's our idea. <laughs> Thank you. 
I heard things. So I've never had the experience having to leave my house or be in my house and worry about going over and all that kind of stuff. When we heard, Neil and I heard her story, how they slept outside and they had to walk miles just to figure out where they're going because they had nothing. And most people cannot understand if you've never experienced that. Right. So the fact that we now produce manufactured products that can withstand hurricanes, no family has to go ever again mm. with the worry of oh my gosh. Mm. having to leave your home. this one 
what program will fit all. And we're all very unique and we've all been through very different uh, experiences. So for each veteran to go through their perspective, you need a very individualized perspective of care. So we put a lot of uh, research and a lot of money behind that, and that's where we're going with that. Uh, with our government affairs, I know we have a lot of um, veterans in here. Um, traditionally, if you were a veteran who did not retire, you're not eligible to use the commissary anymore. You're not allowed, eligible to use the NWR facility anymore. You're not allowed to go to any of the on-base processes anymore. Um, one of the many things that we do in government affairs things is we look at something that's not right and we advocate for what's supposed to be. So uh, this year, uh, one of the things that WWP has actually been behind uh, was voted in and starting in 2020, individuals who are at any service disability rated of zero or higher will now have the ability to utilize APs, will now have the ability to utilize the bar facilities, they'll be able to go to the commissary, they can get gas on phones, you know, all of the other fun things that we used to have back in the day that we thought would be great benefits that when you leave, they automatically get turned off, are being turned back on. And all you have to have is to be able to Imagine I'm in Atlanta, they work in DC, so it's kind of above my level. So I don't know exactly what that date is that they're turning that kind of stuff back on, but that's just one of the other uh, benefits. Another one, another one specifically was the TSGLI. Uh, we have a service group life insurance program through the military. It's, you know, if something unfortunate happens to your loved one while they're serving, you get a $400,000 uh, life insurance policy. But if you also got hurt while you were in service, program is called Traumatic Service Group Life Insurance, and basically the easiest way to kind of uh, compare it is to like a workman's comp for while you're on active duty. Because if you get blown up or you get hurt in the military, it actually impacts your career. A lot of times, if you get hurt, you're not able to progress. And part of that process, they looked at it, they created a, a program for it, and then it got voted in. And then from there, uh, individuals who were losing lifelong versions of income because of this were actually getting compensated up front and were also um, first in line to be able to get those compensations taken care of immediately. Um, another one was our in vitro program. Um, we actually started a program and got legislation passed for our, um, our female service members who were having a problem actually having children and actually got that approved through our government legislation as well. Any of our other veterans that want to talk to me more one-on-one, -on -one, by all means, I'm here at the Atlanta office, and I'm also a retired Army myself, so I don't speak your language. So. <laughs> the, um, we talk about a lot of great veteran programs. Some of you may be aware, and maybe Prudence will address a little bit, but how many veteran-owned businesses are in the room? Okay, awesome, thank you. Let's give all the veteran businesses a hand. Now, as a veteran-owned business, you also qualify for free furniture for your business. Did you know that, Prudence? Yes. It's a new program just implemented this year. And so as a certified, in fact, if you're a veteran, veteran and AA certified companies can get computers, can get furniture, can get cars, can get all types of things if it's related to your business. And so we actually did a class about three months ago about this initiative. If you missed it, uh, reach out to us. I, I can give you the video for the whole presentation on how to get into that program there. You just need to be, you, you, you have to be an 8A company or a veteran certified company. And, the, and so it goes, every single federal agency, when they have furniture, when they have products, that is what they call end of life. But it's still good. It may be end of life for the agency for their use there, but there's still a life cycle to it. And they, they have to put that into the surplus program. As they go through the surplus program, 
they actually trade, agencies trade the furniture and the equipment within other agency, and then if no one takes those products or those equipment, then it goes to uh, goes from GSA down to the state, and then the state makes it available to uh, what they call service or servants, public servants, police officers, and uh, certain industries. But then at that same time, they also make it available to 8A companies and veteran businesses. So talk to Pam or myself, we can tell you more about the program, uh, how you can qualify to get some of those things there. So this time here, I'm gonna turn it back to Pam. <laughs>
short overview, I'm going to talk about what we buy, what it means to be procurement ready, how to make yourself stand up from the crowd. I'm going to talk about the Kingdom Wear uh, Supreme Court decision, uh, adjusting to uh, the current small business climate, how to take advantage of increased uh, opportunities, and that should actually say 2019 save the day. Now for our not. Uh, our National Veteran Small small Business Engagement, and then we'll talk about a couple of resources. Uh, so what does is, what is VA buy? Big VA buys everything, of course. For me, I'm in Network 7, which covers Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. So in our local contracting offices, we buy everything except IT. I pretty much buy everything that uh, that's attached to a veteran, the prosthetics. Uh, we actually pr uh, purchase services, the doctors, nurses um, that touch the patients. We uh, get those big, uh, big dollar wise as our construction projects. Um, this year we only only had thirty-two billion, uh, million dollar, billion dollars for construction. So construction is really big, not just in our area but uh, across the country. Uh, so, and again, we just don't buy IT. That's the biggest way to think about it. Everything that touches the veteran, uh, services the veteran, services the facilities is what we buy. Again, no IT. There is an IT. We have a technical acquisition center called the TAC, and they have all the national contracts, national IT con contracts. We have the SAC. Their Act strategic acquisition center and the SAC uh, tries to put contracts together uh, to get, give us that better buying power. And then we have the NAC. The NAC uh, actual is the National Acquisition Center. Uh, so they do a lot of the national contracts as well as well to get us, you know, the best thing for our buck. So a lot of times um, you might, you know, think that there's a requirement at the local contracting office. But in actuality, we're required to use those national contracts. And along with the construction, we do A and E services. So procurement ready. How, how many of you understand what procurement ready is? Okay. So the biggest thing I tell people when they come up to me, know what a visit is. Okay. It's the Veterans Integrated Service Network. That's who I support. When you know the lingo, so to speak, it kind of helps you when you're in front of that current decision maker, you already know what I'm buying, you already know what network I'm in, things like that. So for those that are new, that haven't uh, really gotten their feet wet, you know you want to have your capability statement, you want to have your registration in SAM, your DUNS number, um, all these things that get you started uh, to you know, to get your business from the ground up. How to stand up from the crowd. Past performance. One of the things that I hear a lot of people struggle with is, well, I want to do business with the government, but I don't have any federal past performance. Federal past performance is not needed. You need to have past performance. Whether it's at state level, city level, we take all that into account because at the end of the day, I need you to have the experience. I need you to truly know that if you get this award, that you're truly capable of being able to do it. So many times we get into situations where somebody says, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. You get the award and then within six months, I can't do it. Uh, so past performances, uh, really, really key as to how to stand out. Um, and again, when you're talking to decision, procurement decision makers, you want to be able to say, hey, I did this exact thing. I did, I've done this parking lot. You know, I, I, I built a parking lot for the city of Atlanta. No, I may not have done it for a VA medical facility, but hey, this is what I've done. I've done a five le uh, level uh, parking garage for the city, and it, this is what they said about me. That goes a whole, you know, a lot further along uh, when you have that. Small business certificates, again, you want to make sure you have all your certifications. 
The VA, of course, we're going SD, VOSB, uh, VOSB first. Um, we have the program called Vets uh, First Verification. Uh, it's going to take you through this the certification of proving that you're a legitimate uh, service disabled veteran owned small business or veteran owned small business. So, who has gotten their Vets First certification? How long did it take? How long ago did you get it, and how long did it take? I got mine about a little over a year ago, and during that time, they were going through some system changes, so it, it, it took like about 60 to 70 days, but now, the, that's because they were changing the, the database. Okay. Uh, but now, I mean, it should be about within, within a month, you should be able to get it. Oh, good, because I, you know, sometimes when I'm going out at these things, I hear that somebody said, it's taken me two years, and I'm like, no, something's, something's kind of not right. So. Um, anybody else? Yes. Uh, about two years, it took about 100 days. Okay. Okay. So I started in my, I finished my application three weeks ago, two weeks ago, so I'm ready. Oh, good luck. website 
to tell, to uh, find out whether or not I'm truly doing business. You know, because a lot of us who do our own, you know, you do your business yourself, you don't have employees, you just start now, you're trying to figure it out, you got your capability statement, you know, you want to have this website, and you don't have the money. You're so busy taking the money trying to put your proposal together, who cares about a website? OIG does. So oh, then the Office of Inspector, Office Inspector, Inspector General. General. I'm sorry. Um, so we, we recently had a situation where their office called me and said, hey, I need you to go take a look at this website, and I need you to tell me if this is reputable or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know what, about what the company's doing, but it's just the fact that because I'm in contracting and have the experience, I normally can tell whether or not a company has done, you know, it's a pretty reputable company. Because most of the companies who actually have gotten government contracts or city or state, they brag on themselves. So, you know, so think about those kind of things when you're doing your website. I, again, I understand how it is. You want to do Wix or something because you're just starting out. But people are watching. And if OIG is watching from the VA side, I guarantee you that they're looking you know, in different agencies as well. And you want to attend any uh, direct access program events. One of the things I'll tell you, utilize PTAC um, here at Georgia, Georgia Tech. Um, they have the Procurement Technical Acquisition Center. Um, they're free. Uh, you have GCA that you can utilize uh, to, to find out some events that can help you. Uh, save the date. So uh, this year, our small business engagement is December 10th through the 11th uh, at the Gaylord, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, very nice hotel. Uh, so a lot of times people ask me, is it worth the investment? You're going to have to decide that for yourself. Right. However, this is a great opportunity to meet procurement decision makers. Now, as of right now, I don't believe many procurement decision makers will be at this event. Uh, I have not, uh, I know I haven't gotten an invite, and my fellow directors, most of us have not gotten invites. They're trying to gear it for the program managers. So the program managers, you know, the, the, the cores that are coming out, telling you about their requirements. Um, but I'll tell you, they normally want to stay in their offices and don't want to come out and meet. <laughs> so hopefully it will change this year and that uh, all of us will be able to come. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we have a leadership roundtable. So for a person like me, I'll, I have a complete schedule when I arrive there. So I do matchmaking where you usually get about 10 to 15 minutes to sit down and fix your capability uh, briefing. We do the luncheons where I'll sit down with the about eight companies at one time and you know socialize their events in the evening there's exhibits um, you know for people to test out their pro uh, their products the uh, South Korean companies were here uh, a few months back and that was one of the things that I recommended to them they have some great uh, products uh, comparable to the salon cost uh, and so you know those there they want to get into the market with the VA and so if they bring, if they exhibit and they bring their products, well, guess who's testing them out? A lot of them. So, uh, and then you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one follow up meetings. Uh, for me, it's, you know, and, and I know some of you have gone through this with me already. You know, I, I come to an event and I say, follow up with me, and it's hard as heck to get to me. <laughs> you know, I know that. <laughs> so, you know, so we do this. It, it's so many people, thousands of people, so, but you, you know, if you be diligent, because I, I know how it is, I will, we will get to meet, we will, or even if we don't get to meet face to face, I try my best to take out, if I've told you I'm going to take the time, I do my best to try to set that time uh, to get, to get with you, and some of my counterparts. Uh, so, the direct access program events. So right now we've got 
one that's going to be in Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, well, we've already passed those dates. Uh, there was one in uh, May in Atlanta. Uh, so again, you know, we cover Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. Uh, so you want to make sure. I just did um, a South. Oh, I didn't do it. My team did it. We just did a southeastern event up in Wilmington that's focused on construction. Uh, so for uh, for the construction side, I would say look for um, all those events that are geared towards construction. Because there, what I'm finding is there's a whole lot of them down south. Uh, transportation, I've got industry days. Uh, transportation is, is a big thing that my organization is struggling with. Um, we can't seem to put, put real good quality contracts in place. Um, so we need the industry to come out and tell us what we're doing wrong. Um, so you have to uh, just, you know, look out for those kind of things. Um, where can we find the 2020 day? Uh, it should be on FBO. When oh, we okay. we'll publicize everything, they will be out FBO. Okay. If you reach out to me, um, I'll just re I'll just have to get my small business person um, or one of my division chiefs that runs those areas send her an email and let you know when our site visits. Um, when it comes to construction, I, I tell people all the time, even if you're not a, a veteran-owned business or if you don't have any government contracts, you've never done anything in a federal workspace, come to those site visits because all the big boys are there. And they have to meet their social economic goals as well. Uh, so you can, you know, do some kind of mentorship, uh, partnership, whatever it needs to be, um, that you can just get, you know, that small little piece of the pie. So there are several um, websites um, that you can access. We've got our veteran uh, entrepreneur entrepreneur portal. Um, VIP has their own website. There's that because you can go to um, VIP Biz, I believe, and it'll walk you. It has a checklist of the things you need to get your uh, certification. Uh, so here are some of our resources. There, I mean, there, there are so many websites out there that can actually. Uh, Wanted to clarify something. Uh, how many of you have heard about the Kingdom Wear ruling? 
veteran owned small businesses, I'm required to set it aside for those companies. Okay? Um, and that's great, that's great. But one of the things that we've been finding across the country is we've been getting gouged in prices. Because the SDVOSB say, I need to make money. So I'm gonna jack the price up 25%. We've seen that in a lot of our um, AME contracts. At the end of the day, as contracting officers, we're required to determine that price fair and reasonable. So if I've got two SDVOSB companies charging me anywhere from uh, 20 to 25 percent, most of my junior contracting officers are going to say, "Hey, you got two, you got competition, mm -hmm. right?" So that's how we end up paying so much more for something that we should be paying a whole lot less. And I've been telling people, you know, don't be a pass through. Uh, if you're going to have the company, do the work. Uh, because we do, we do check for that stuff. Um, not necessarily my office is going to be investigating, but OIG definitely will. And believe it or not, I get complaints from your fellow companies um, that you're not doing the work. And once that happens, then we're required to take a look into it. Um, so what the VA, because everybody says, I'm an SDVOSB. You have to come to me. No, I don't. If your price is not fair and reasonable, I'm not required to come to you. So one of the things that we are training our contracting officers right now on is, is, it, is the pricing fair and reasonable? And we're no longer looking at what your prices are. We're looking at the local price, the local market, the commercial prices. So that means we're looking at what the large businesses are offering as well. So we're not just looking at, see like, I'm not, I kid you not, it's funny. Because uh, I had talked about it, I've been talking about it for the past few years. It just seemed like SDVOSBs got together and said, hey, we're going to jack this price up. You keep your price this way, you keep your price this way, and this is the price we're going to get. Um, you know, and, and, and that's a, it's just a natural thing. But we are buying commercial items. So we want to know what the true market price is, and the price has got to be fair and reasonable. So a lot of that, uh, this is a, another good thing for you to know about as far as price fair and reasonable. Publish price lists, any previous history. If you've sold your product or service to another government agency, you know, and you and you show that to me, then I can justify that price. So there, there are a ton of ways for us to uh, justify a fair and reasonable price. So just again, remember, uh, we're, most of the things we buy are commercial. So we're looking at what those market prices are. So uh, with that, any questions? I know it's a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for sharing your, all this information. Uh, today was the first day I heard about pass through. Can you tell me what are some of the triggers or what would, what are some components that would be a red flag for a business serving as a pass through? Um, we have limitations on the amount of subcontracting uh, the companies can do. So if you aren't doing 51% um, of the work, uh, it'll it'll be evident if we ask you for your subcontracting plan. Or if you send, um, maybe for some services, you might send me um, all the resumes from a large business. That the only, the, the, um, I'll share the latest thing that has come to us was a, a SDV, a, a small business, is having the large business come out and do all the repair work for our equipment. Well, no, that's that's not how you do it. You would, normally we would just go ahead and award to the large business and have them sub to the small business. Or we could set it aside if they're authorized dealer, things like that. But usually if you're, if you're we can tell if you're not doing work. <clears throat> or again, it may not be us that come out um, and take a look, but, VA OIG will, 
And again, the, re, the, the way we find out most of the time is another contractor has called us and told us. <laughs> or you're on site, you're, you're, you're working the contract, right? But the people on site don't work for you. <laughs> you know, I, I actually, we actually sent one of our contract specialists out to, to find out what company the, the person worked for. Because I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Mr. Seacrest, um, but he loves SDVOSBs. He loves to find out what VA agent uh, contracting officers aren't awarding to SDVOSBs properly. Um, so he, he sends out a report to everybody in the world contracting to tell on people. And we actually, <laughs> and we actually, you know, a lot of times we don't report back to him as to what we did. But in this particular case, um, I had a company who had two different NICS codes. They were uh, providing some kind of, uh, what is it, not courier, the steno type services. I, mean, uh, I, don't, I, I can't remember, it wasn't actually a transcription, but it was um, something, uh, gosh, I can't think of it, I'm sorry. Um, but they were they had one for services and they were doing something in construction too. So you know the world's like, well, how can they perform these two different NICS codes? Well, the company truly was performing and they could perform well. But oh by the way, we did check to have somebody go and ask the, the person who was at the facility what company he worked for. Mm -hmm. Just ask. Transportation of your favorite companies that have vehicles that don't emit any greenhouse gases. And on the same front, where are you guys going to buy and solar panels to install on buildings? Because the VA hospital in Phoenix, if you drive there and park there, then we park in the shade of Okay. Um, there are green initiatives. I don't believe that if we're actually buying transportation services, that we would really take into consideration. Um, you know, that type of thing. Because usually I'll tell you that we're, I don't want to say it depends, but a lot of times what will happen is we'll do best value instead of low, so we have two evaluation um, criteria. We do low price technically acceptable. That's where we look at your, your proposal to find out if you're technically capable. If you're technically able, capable, then we'll look at your price. Uh, for low, uh, for best value, is we're we're not taking price uh, as a key factor. It's your technical ability. It's your delivery date. Um, it could be I'm looking for something innovative. Uh, so if I'm work, if in your proposal you talk a lot about you know green and. If the customer finds that, um, you know, that's something that they'd be willing to pay a little bit more for. Or, or, or pay less, that's the thing. Driving electric will 
cost you about 90% less than anything else, liquid or gases. Right. UGA so. is getting 18 or 20 electric buses mm -hmm. any day now, and those buses will cost them 90 or we'll say 75% less than anything diesel, CNG, LNG, la la la. So there's not this 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 concept of paying more is green still. And well, but see, go away because when you drive electric, you just you can charge 20 percent less than the, the market value. Right. So that's the thing. So your your when you write it in your proposal, your proposal will come in cheaper than everybody else's, and then people will be able to see why. So that that's a great way of getting in. As far as solar panels, those kind of things. I don't know because I don't I don't know how much we're buying in that. But there is a person that um, handles all of that, and that's under the Capital Asset Manager uh, program. So if you have questions on all of that, you can reach out to that person. And um, they actually just changed the person, so it's positions vacant. But if you reach out to me, I'll uh, I'll get you in contact with the person who handles. Uh, all those type things. Because I should say that that institution or the building also close to 90% of the get serious on the solar, maybe nighttime storage or whatever, you might have to pay more, but it, it, uh, I mean, it might take 10 years to pay off, but then right. in the next 30 years, the North Power Act, what are we doing? Raising rates on everybody, we're trying to. Right, so can you imagine, just let's use the land, because the land is always the news. <laughs> can you imagine if you came and you submitted your proposal for our shuttle services, right? And you were able to save us a significant amount of money. Do you know what kind of good news that story is for not just for us, but for you as well? Because now we create this initiative, and now not only is the land going to do it, keep in mind I've got eight facilities in my network, and the odds are one's going to do it. And it's really good, another one's gonna do it, another one's gonna do it. And believe me, I know every director of contracting in the country. So what's gonna happen is, you do it in business seven, I'm gonna call my friend and visit eight, visit six, hey, guess what I just did? All the way over to 21 in California. So believe me, keep talking. Yes. Well, first of all, thank you again for the privilege of your time. So, you know, 
Office of Rural Property. They do the major leases. We do the smaller leases um, under us. It's GSA's authority. So GSA says, okay, GA, this is what you're, what you're going to get. Um, I'm going to give you the authority to go off and do it. So uh, GSA has, as far as facilities, GSA has a, something called the Building Maintenance and Operations Contract um, that does all the facility uh, maintenance, things like that. Um, but right now, Al the state of Alabama is not a part of it. So we try to utilize, we're in the process of utilizing that contract more through GSA just to do lawn care, pest control, things like that. As far as the leasing and everything, like all of the clinics and everything, you guys are That's run, that's through the government. Uh -huh. um, that's not outsourced. Uh, that's a, another VA office that they, that's strictly for canteen. Um, there is, I'm trying to think, we used to do food service for Fort Mac. I don't know if we're still doing it, but um, a lot of times, I'm trying to think, we have to clear what we call Randall Shepherd F. Uh, to be able to give it to the industries for the blind first um, before we, we actually do contracts. But I want to say here in the state of Georgia, we haven't had to go through it, but I only am aware of only one food service contract, and that was for Fort Mac. Um, but that's something, again, that you want to go look at FPDS or FBO to see what's out there. Um, but that's you know, food service isn't normally something that we get into. Uh, we will do sometimes, um, and this is uh, possibly done by the government purchase card, where there might be a veteran who needs some kind of um, feeding uh, tube or food through that's going to come through the IV, and I've seen that purchase with the purchase card. Mm -hmm. yes. um, you were talking about using FPDS, and I love that tool to kind of and get information, and then you said, you know, get in front of the opportunities and then be in front of the people like you and the small business types to let them know that we exist. Mm -hmm. How do you suggest we best do that? Is it okay to, I mean, because, you know, we can email, and I know you're extremely busy, but is it okay to just pop in on you <laughs> or just, just, <laughs> <come back in? laughs> just, just email, email? Um, and so the best way to go about it is to go through my small business representative her name is Janice Ellis. She's out of uh, Montgomery, Alabama. But she will take your capability statement. She will sit down with you. Um, has anybody worked with her? Uh, I've reached out to her. I've never had any feedback. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, I need to know that as well. Because I would like to be telling everybody here to start with her. But if she's not giving you any kind of assistance, I need to know that as well. Um, I'll say you can email me, but a lot of times, I don't know if uh, people realize this, a lot of that goes in my spam. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know, sometimes I've had people say, well, I emailed you, and I'm like, oh, I don't get it. Um, so uh, our email system sometimes will, you know, say external, mm -hmm. um, if it's not a government email, but they don't always come directly to me, so I might miss it. Um, but you can, you know, again, feel free to email me. I can't sit and talk with everybody, you know, because it is so many of you. Uh, and only one of me. Um, and again, I support eight hospitals. So do not pop in on me. I, I, and, you know, and we can, we can set something up, but I'll tell you, I have a lock on my door. And I had to get a lock on my door um, because People have come searching for me. Uh, and that's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's kind of scary because you'll see, I, 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 I watched this lady come, uh, come up to where I am. Uh, my, I'm on the third floor. 
and she's just walking around. And you know how when people don't belong, mm-hmm. and she's like, she's like looking. And my office, my placard on the outside of where we work does not say contract. So she's walking around, and um, so I can, you can see through our, our suite doors uh, who's you know standing there. And I'm standing there, and I'm talking to my uh, administrative officer. And I'm like, this lady keeps walking by. So she finally, and so I opened the door and I said, well, who are you looking for? And she says, I'm looking for Shannon Ross. And Shannon's, Shannon Ross is my administrative officer. So I know you're not looking for her. So the odds are you're looking for me. And I said, well, how can, I said, well, here's Shannon right here. Well, she didn't know what to say to her. And she started talking about contracting. Oh, you're looking for me. <laughs> because, because I don't know who people are. Right, right, right. I don't. And I've had, I, even with my disgruntled contractors who <laughs> actually are upset because of payment and all that kind of stuff, I will invite you in. Because if you got a problem with our contract, I want to work with you. But some people, I just don't know. Mm-hmm. I've had people show up on the fifth floor <laughs> in a visit office. So that's why I say, just let me know that you'd like to come. I will gladly try to schedule something with you, but if you show up, you won't get in. <laughs> Unless I know you're really good. Yes. This question is back to pricing. Um, when you're looking at that, are you um, speaking with the college you have in the other regions for their pricing or for our region here, what the pricing is? Because I imagine it's different from state to state, region to region. It is different state to state, but believe it or not, it's really comparable. Because, um, let's just go back to transportation. Uh, the, the performance work statement is gonna pretty much be standardized, or it should be standardized across the country. So your pricing for fuel or something just might be a little off, you know, different, but the service itself shouldn't be that much more. So if you you give us a proposal and you're you're utilizing a, another contract that you have, that's okay because we actually know that you are, you know, you're they're paying that price um, and, and there's adjustments. So um, the contracts that the state uses for their transportation, they're large companies, mm-hmm. so I couldn't compete with the price that they would use because they're, right. you know, they're large. Mm-hmm. So our pricing probably would be different because, right. you know, they have more capacity than others. So Right, but just keep in mind, usually we're not, compa- we're not comparing government pricing, federal government pricing to state government pricing. We're just using that as an experience factor to say that you can actually do it. So um, in, a, in, in regards to transportation, there's so many SCVOSBs that are in the transportation business, so we we always kind of have a, a knowledge of what the going rate is. So, yes. I have a question. Um, I saw on one of your slides where you had um, listed some of the solicitations coming out, and one being transitional housing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have personal care homes. Mm-hmm. So what are what are some of these that like that that, that contract will be looking for? in regards to personal care homes or transitional homes or facilities? Not sure. Okay. Uh, just follow up with me. Okay. And, and I'll get that information. Because now we have the Mission Act where you've got, we have, so we have long-term acute care um, <coughs> places, we have nursing homes, um, and, and it's getting to a point where nursing homes, the nursing homes don't want to, um, business with the government because they they don't just have veterans so anytime a nursing home um, has an employee that's going to touch a veteran they got they got to pay them that minimum rate wage, wage rate yeah. and they don't want to do it because they have so many other people uh, so there are uh, can't think of the company name right now but we have um, transitional housing in South Carolina, whereas if there's an overflow of patients and we can't uh, house the patients, that they might go to that transitional housing 
temporarily until they hit the spot. Might be long, you know, longer term. Uh, but I would actually have to, you know, get some more information uh, on that one for you. Yes. Are there any regulatory um, opportunities with the hospitals, the nursing homes, apart from any monopolies that states would have? There is something called a joint commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joint commission. Okay. They have that. I mean, is that pretty much it? I mean, are they? Uh, I'm sure there are more because they're the only deeming well, that and DNV. They're the only deeming um, authority for hospitals. But are there other opportunities apart from accreditation um, that would arise with the healthcare facilities? Because usually those, um, what I found is that pretty much CMS has given all the states mm -hmm. that contract. So I didn't know if there were smaller companies or other opportunities where um, businesses could be a part of that. If a I'm not sure. If you send me that, um, do you know who in the hospital is responsible for that area? Because that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily know, but if you tell me who is responsible for it okay. in the hospital, I can get you there. Okay, thank you. And, the, and you said to send it to Janice Ellison? Yes. yes. Thank you for coming out. I'd like to thank Ms. Prudence for coming out and giving us all the valuable information we received tonight. As you can tell, you know, this is a unique place to be the contracting officer, right? <laughs> you get to speak to them directly and you, you don't have to fight that locked door, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you understand what they go through, so them in a place like this is a, a great opportunity. So uh, thank you for coming out. And uh, I, I think we had a few people come from out of town, so definitely want to thank you. Uh, two from North Carolina if I'm not mistaken. Anybody further than that from North Carolina? No? Texas? Texas. Yeah. Okay. Jamaica? Okay. <laughs> and I'd also like to uh, thank our veterans for coming out. And uh, just to let you know, this is 
one of the benefits of membership of GCM. You know, we get to meet people, we meet contracting officers, decision makers on a personal level. And, um, you know, it's something that, that we call facilitation, facilitating relationships. So, um, uh, we're a membership organization, this is just a reminder, and uh, we have a special until the end of the year. <laughs> Become a new member or renew your membership, you can do it at 249 as opposed to the 499 rate that we normally have. And uh, with that, you get access to our weekly government trainings where some of the things Ms. Prudence talks about, we go into details on that. Um, how to go into FPDS and identify the past, the past history on a particular contract, and how to identify some of the pricing set your price and go into GSA schedules and all of that to identify what the local pricing look like. So if you're interested in knowing more about government contracting, and I'm assuming that's why most of you are here, uh, becoming a member at the DCA is a great start. Um, and then, of course, association ministers like these and uh, big matching platform. So the big matching platform is something that you get with it's a package that runs $1,200 per year. So just think of it as a 75% discount on, on the, the package. Anyone who used that package, any of our members can vouch for the package? Got one here, any other? Yeah, 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 okay. So basically it facilitates the, the uh, identification of opportunities. You can set the package to, to email you the opportunities on the Okay, um, also members have access to our health training app. So lots of our, most of our trainings will be recorded and placed in the health training app. And it's um, members, member, members only access. And, uh, and there's more. I mean, uh, just like you have personal access to contracting officers, you have personal access to us. Um, we're, we are business owners. certification specialists and contracting specialists and financing specialists and on and on and on. And if we don't know it, we know someone who does know it. Okay? So uh, we try to be an ecosystem for growing our government contract. So anything you need, you can give us a call. So if anyone's interested in becoming a member, um, we welcome you and either uh, myself or Pamela Myra or Ed can help you with that. If you have any questions, we welcome your questions. Now, last but not least, the Facebook um, um, check-in. Did anyone do the check-in on Facebook? Yep. So, so if I understand the award tonight is a GCA teacher, and uh, you might need it going on because it's called. <laughs> So, so who had the uh, uh, highest amount of uh, likes on their check in? Hey, I liked yours. So, so, how, so what was the number? Six, I got six. Oh, I got five, five, five. Oh, five? Any more than five? Sixteen. Sixteen in the back? You're not a shirt. I know, I am. <laughs> I was just going to bless my somebody with my shirt. Sixteen, going with this. Sixteen, going with this. I'm going to bless somebody with my shirt. <laughs> oh, I was one of them, my boy. I was one of them. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my all right. In the morning, morning something. Come back. 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 Come